Hey guys, welcome to Deb's Dog Tricks of the Trade. And today we're going to be working on Troy. And I've got my friends on Facebook over there on my cell phone. And I am talking mainly about show grooming, English Springer Spaniels. But here's the trick. There's no difference between a show trim and a pet trim, except for what you do with the feathering and the top coat. So whenever I'm working around feet, the rear end or the head of even a show springer, this is what all you, all the pet owners should be doing as far as grooming and pet shops. Um, I have a motto when I'm advertising this pet shop and it's like, uh, you know, get your dog trimmed to look like the breed it's supposed to be. And so pet groomers could do this if they had that knowledge. And since I have never really been in a pet shop in my life ever, uh, of course I learned all my all breed dog grooming from champions and professional handlers and sitting ringside and seeing the real thing. So now we're gonna work on Troy. Um, we've got good lighting. This is a good contrast. Black dogs are hor horrible to see in detail, so I'm hoping we can get a lot better luck with this. Okay. Nine blade on the head. Check your blades. You need a 7F, a nine blade, and a wah to groom a springer. That's it for a show, show springer. So, the first thing I am going to do is her whiskers. Now here's the nine blade and I'm just going to go over the top. I'm not pushing. You push, you're going to end up leaving for fur marks. I'm kind of going, and I'm going from the back because I want to catch those whiskers by their root. Kind of, you know, of course the shorter the better. Now, I tried to show this yesterday. I wasn't happy with what I did on Carson. Okay, now whenever you're using a clipper, you have to clip on a flat, smooth surface. This entire dog is round. The entire dog. So, but, so you have to create, well, that's not true. They have a level top, top, top skull and they have you know, level cheeks, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so you have to create a flat, tight, surface to trim on in a lot of places on all breeds. So, how about these lips? So, what I'm going to do, if you can see my finger in here, my magic finger. So, I've got this pulled the whole way back. Now I'm going to take this nine blade and I'm going to go in here and get all that yucky stuff out. I mean, it's really just collected spit. That's the only reason why it turns brown the way it does. And again, over here. See how I'm making that just a flat? Listen, these are clippers. They are going to cut the skin. They really will. All right? So, and the only way it's going to cut the skin is if you're grabbing loose skin or putting the skin in between these teeth. So if you only trim flat, tight surfaces, you will never cut any dog with a clipper. Right, you get in trouble when you start doing this kind of stuff. So oh, it's, I mean, sounds easy to me, but I know it's not necessarily easy to everyone. So, pearl neckline. And the trick here is take Three fingers, three fingers, find the breastbone, which should be in front of the dog if you have a decently bred springer. Okay, three fingers. Take those three fingers and rest them on top of that bone. And then there's your pearl neckline, nine blade. This is already the length it's supposed to be, so why would I clipper it? I wouldn't. But I'm going to start up here, 
because remember all my lessons on like an airplane off like an airplane so I'm looking to groom here but I'm starting with the clipper here and I'm not paying any attention to the clipper there so on like an airplane now I'm pushing and then off like an airplane on like an airplane off like an airplane and what am I doing with these lips I'm holding them tight to make what a flat tight surface to trim on same thing over here okay now I grabbed that ear on purpose that wasn't just to get it out of your way why to make this a flat tight surface to groom on on like an airplane off like an airplane on like an airplane off like an airplane now she's got a little old lady old lady booger there so I'm just gonna leave that co covered with hair no reason to sh show that off now, on a show springer I absolutely positively do not want this carved out as a perfect you I and again I wouldn't do it on a pet so it's just it's a sporting dog just leave it be all right so here we go now I'm gonna get as close up to these ears as possible now I showed everybody this the other day okay now they all have it and you know what because she's just a house pet do not do this at home do not do not do what I am doing ever 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 a springer you own uh, because if you don't do it with the expertise that I have it's likely you're going to end up cutting that and that would be bad but I am sacrificing Troy's hair to show you okay they all have this flap okay don't ask me why right but they all have this flap and it opens and it closes and it's kind of there and boy do you think that's easy to get your clipper caught in that oh yeah so whenever you're working around these ears uh, this is one of my hunting dogs by the way so she was like she hated the show ring so i just never made her go through it so she's not the most polite on the table so whenever you're working around the ears know where that is have your finger on it if you can, always have your finger on it. Always. If you can't, at least know where it is. So, now, I know where it is because I can see it. Okay, so I'm gonna take the nine blade in here. Yes, against the grain. And I'm gonna get that hair out right there. That's all I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna stop. That's it for that. Now here is your line from the base of this ear straight down. Take your bloody comb. Do it. Take your Belgium. Go straight down. There is your line. And again, I told you that their hair grows this way here and that way there. So it will make this automatic ridge. She has a ridge. Follow the ridge. Right, so I mean, it's kind of, you know, follow the yellow brick road, follow the ridge. Right, so now I'm going to take this nine blade from the corner of this ear, which you can't possibly see at that kind of camera angle. Let's try back there. Okay. Nope. That's probably why I need a camera person, but oh well. You and me. And I'm going to go straight down with that nine blade. That's it. And I'm going to leave that fluffy ridge straight down. Then, again, okay, on like an airplane, off like an airplane. I would do that on both sides. Now, I'm not going to cut away the flap now, but where is it? It's there. I don't, maybe you could get little barrette thingies that pinch and put it on that flap if you're a beginner groomer so you so you know where it is hell take um if it's not a show dog take some nail polish 
take some nail polish and put nail polish on the underside of where that little flap is. I guess be a beginning show person could do that too. Nail polish is going to wear off, but certainly a pet. Put nail polish right on that spot so you always know where it is. I've never thought about that before, so I just taught myself something new. That's the other thing with these crafts, these trades. Never get it in your mind that you are the ultimate expert knowing all things. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I've been doing this 50 plus years, and I'm telling you, I learn new things all the time. And if you don't keep yourself open to new things, you're not going to be the best groomer you could possibly be. Now, the next line is from the corner of the ear to the corner of the eye. Okay, it, and now, do you see what I'm doing here? I'm stretching this tight, okay, to make what? A flat, smooth surface. Tight, suit, tight, flat, tight, flat, smooth surface. Okay, on like an airplane, off like an airplane. Uh, I guess you probably need both. So there's the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth. That's the area in which I'm doing. Yeah. Seems simple when I'm explaining it and when I'm doing it, doesn't it? On like an airplane, off like an airplane. And I'll tell you, Troy is definitely going to give me a bunch of words when I'm done today because really I put her up on the table and I do her as fast as possible. She does not have a liking for this. Okay, corner of the ear to the corner of the eye and then starting back here on like an airplane, off like an airplane. On like an airplane, off like an airplane. Now, if you do that, you'll never create a clipper mark. Ever. So if you've created a clipper mark, I guarantee you it's because you went like this and this. This and th that creates a clipper mark. But if you go on like an airplane, then push, 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 off like an airplane. Never make a clipper mark. Now I'm going to do the top ear, the top of her ear leather. Now, how the heck do you make that a flat, tight surface? That is anything but. Well, we're going to have to. So, here's my hand. I'm going to take this ear leather. I'm tucking my fingers in here. My fingers are like tucked in there. Okay. Now, and I'm going to make that a flat tight surface. Now for a pet, you can certainly go against the grain, but you don't have to groom so often. And I'm pulling that ear leather across my hand to keep it tight and flat. I'm going to go against the grain on her because she's in what I call, you know, a pet trim. Um, I would not do this with a show dog, especially a liver show dog. You do that and they will grow back silver or white hair. Like she has anyway. Okay, this is the kiss of death for everybody, I know. And again, what did I tell you? You go like this with these clippers along this edge, you are going to cut the ear. All right. So what are we gonna do? How do we make that a flat, tight surface against my fingers? Okay, now the other thing is, I know where the ear leather is. Okay, so I'm holding that, and I'm not going to go down like this. Big no no. Troy. Okay, oh, it's hard for me to do it at a can camera angle here, but go straight, go from here across. See what I'm doing? Maybe not. really hard to capture with a camera. Going here, I'm going across, across. I'm never, never, never going to go that way on that flap. Same thing on 
the outside. Never, never, never go down like that, ever, on the ear. Start in here and go across. You'll never cut it. Impossible to cut it if you do that. Now if I had my scissors over here, I'd be in good shape. I sometimes leave this part till the very, very, very end because it kind of doesn't matter, but since I'm here, I'm going to do it. Now, with my fingers like this, there is that front part of the ear leather, and you don't want to leave all that scraggly hair. Again, I know where the ear leather, the skin, is. I'm not going to cut close to the skin. All I want is a straight line made with the hair. And if you went back and measured, I don't know, there's probably, there's a, there's a goodly amount of hair left there. It's kind of like when you fill, when you stand up in a pair of sneakers and your toes are not hitting the front of the shoe. Well, the same thing here. That, that, that scissor line is not hitting the ear leather. It's actually in front of the ear leather, but because of the trimming, it looks like that's the edge of the ear leather, but it's not. So, now on this side, I will do the ear as a liver and white shoe ball. So, once again, we are going to make the ear a flat, smooth surface. On like, you still do that on like an airplane, off like an airplane, even here. Every place I want a clipper, I'm just, see, I've got, ah, I've got my hand. My hand is under there, making that, whoop, making that a hard surface for my clipper to trim on. Now, under here, no judge ever sees this under here. So really, I like to just get all that cleaned out. It allows the ear to fall closer to the head anyway, which is something that you do want to do. Don't want big goofy ears sticking out. Okay, and here is this flap again. I got my fingers back here. So straight across, straight across. Same thing here. Okay. Straight across. Straight across. Straight across. And again, because I'm here, I might as well just show you. Now, I do know. So, you see how I'm holding this? So that this ear leather is sticking out. And I feel it. I know exactly where the ear leather is. So, with a straight. See, when I use this part of the double duck, it's straight. So I'm going to use the straight shear here. Now if you also notice anytime I'm working around this ear I am pulling it to make it as flat and tight as possible. Any loose skin can get caught in a clipper or, or a scissor. Now uh, she's just got a little tiny bit of goofy hair there sticking out. Alright, so. Alright. There we've got the pretty, pretty, pretty ears on both sides. Uh, for my show people, as you're looking, this is a Jesse James granddaughter. She has a drop dead, exquisite uh, female head. In the breed standard, any markings are permitted, meaning you could have a solid white springer with a normal liver head and maybe a big liver spot in the middle of his body. And that should be just as acceptable as our cookie cutter perfect markings that Julie Gassow, bless her heart, uh, actually created that when she bred to Recorder. Recorder was a best in show dog brought over from Britain. And he, ha he had those cookie cutter kind of solid markings here, the blaze here. 
lots of ticking, which Julie also brought out because she didn't like it. Um, so, but this bitch has a to die for head. Flat, flat back skull, flat. See that, flat, okay. We will go through the breed standard next week. It's also square on top. But that, but <laughs> this is a consideration when you're grooming these dogs. And this is why I stopped to mention, mention it. For a show dog, the judge is judging your dog based on the breed standard. So we have to breed our dogs to the breed standard. We should. And we have to groom them to the breed standard. Now, here's a nine. In the breed standard, a moderate stop and big high arched eyebrows. So will we ever, ever, ever clip these, these eyebrows ever? Not in your lifetime. Never leave them. This dog's 12 years old and she's never had them touched. And in here, I would not carve that out. These are not American Cockers with that real steep stop. On like an airplane, I'm not touching this hair. I am not touching this hair. What I'm doing is I'm starting here, not touching the hair, so I can gradually start to put the clipper. No touch, no touch, gradually start it there. So don't think that I'm clipping in there. I am not. Coming up now, I'm just taking the corner. Not touching. I'm taking, see how I just, I just use that little corner? Sit. Ah. On like an airplane, off like an airplane. Now her hair grows this direction off to the side, so that's the direction that I'm going to use the clippers. Don't necessarily go like that. Follow the grain of the hair. There would be a reason to do this, or even this, but that's corrective grooming if you don't have a dog with a good skull. And maybe we'll do that someday. But the, two, the three dogs I happen to own have exquisite headpieces, so I can't show you that kind of corrective grooming. Maybe I'll get a nice pet in here with a weird shaped skull and show you something. Okay. So again, this is with the grain now. I went against the grain on the cheek. I'm going, and look where my hand is. My hand is under here, making all of this tight. Never, never, never let the clipper go into that ear. Come off before you get that far. Now, we have this weird thing that's called the ossiput. This big bony thing. Well, if you run your clipper over that or this ridge back here, what's going to happen? Clipper marks, clipper marks, clipper marks. So, what we are going to do is what? Make a flat, tight, smooth surface to trim on. So I pulled all that hair forward, on like an airplane, off like an airplane, on, off, on, off. Now I am actually clippering that ridge because I pulled this hair forward, see? Then when I go back, that ridge is perfectly trimmed. No clipper marks. So that's kind of simple. All right, now, um, Actually, from this angle, you can probably see how flat the top skull is on this bitch. That's beautiful. Um, Jesse James, her grandfather, had the prettiest modern head I've seen because he had this plane and then he, his nose was also straight. In the, the, the U.S. dogs, if you will, we can have a tiny bit of a slant down. We just do. So it is what it is, but let's at least keep this skull square and flat so that we have an English Springer Spaniel. The head is what makes this breed distinctive from all other sporting dogs and Spaniels. So let's keep our head pieces, gang. Now, here is that line straight down that I talked about. Yeah, Tree is not gonna love this. Seriously, I do a 20 minute pet tour on her and I consider myself lucky. She gave me that 20 minutes. And straight down. Now, her head is done. And like I said, 
you don't mind me saying so, that she looks like a female. Beautiful eyebrows. Can you see this dog's eyes? No. Can you even see the pigment around her eyes? No. Why? Because the pigment around her eyes and her nose match the color of her coat. And her eye color matches the color of her coat. That is the AKC breed standard. Look at that. Now she has a bit of a red hull, which again, I would, I would get out with quote unquote, okay, well, she really doesn't even hardly have any, but you know what I mean. So, some do badly. Look at that. You can't even see her eyes or the pigment around her eyes because it so perfectly matches the color of her coat. That is ideal. Then you want these nice, big, high arched eyebrows, just a moderate stop. Now from the side, it looks like this, the, the, it looks like the stop is deeper because of these high arched eyebrows as she goes falling off my spinning table. So, and in reality, her planing is not nearly as bad as a lot of American-made springers. And that's probably, I'm grateful to her grandsire, Jesse James, for that. Right, her planing's actually pretty decent when it comes to an American dog. The other thing, big, thick, big, thick lips. Thick, big. We're getting thin, tiny, thin lips. This is a hunting dog. They use this whole head structure in these ears for scenting, for picking up birds. Hello, let's not lose these head pieces or we're gonna lose our hunting dog. Right, okay, nice, big, thick. Look how thick that lip is. And then the other thing is, if I can see it, yeah. You see this, the under jaw? You see where this lip hangs equal to the underjaw. See that? See that? That is correct. Look at that. There should be that much on every single dog you own out there. Show people. Look at that. That is correct. Right. And you know what I'm seeing in the show ring? I'm seeing shelties. I'm seeing shelties. I'm seeing lips like that and super, super, super thin. So, you know, can we please pay attention to that in our breeding programs? Look at these. Nice, big lips. Look at that. Right? Your dog, are you, are you breeding dogs like that? You showing dogs like that? That's what they should look like on their lips and their noses and the pigment of their eyes. Okay, so we did the side was against the grain with a nine. The whiskers were just, I wasn't even touching a nine, just against. We pulled this skin tight to get along here. Just one time, in and out. Don't keep going at it. You're going to make the dog sore. One time, you're done. Okay. Under here, this is already perfect. Why cut it? So I went on like an airplane and then off like an airplane. And my line was under the ear, straight down. And that's what I got all cleaned out. This was against the grain, and then this was with the grain. And then this, this was three big fingers, maybe even four, depending on how your dog is structured. Like, a, Troy was never shown. She's four. I put four fingers on her so it looks right. If your dog's got a big, deep chest that sticks out like Connor's was, his breastbone, his breastbone equaled here. If I went straight down, that is where that dog's breastbone would have been in real life. Right there, under there. And that is correct. Right. I'm not saying this bitch is great. I didn't show her. Mostly because of her attitude. I could have shown her. Could have easily gotten a championship on her. She didn't like it, so I didn't make her do it. We had other things to do. Um, I think she's got three ESSFTA medallions for multi-title work throughout her life. She's got 16 performance titles. So trust me, I kept her busy just doing other things that she preferred doing and liking.
Yeah. Here's your seven blade. Now I'm just using the seven blade. Check your blade. Seven. Can't. I'm just going over top. I'm not pushing. Now by the time I get to this ridge, I am going to be pushing. Huh. I can't tell with the lighting and all that good stuff where we are, what we're doing. Okay. And again, I'm coming. This is a seven blade, and I'm not pushing tight. I'm just kind of blending in where the nine blade was and the seven up blade was so that there isn't a real stark line. And I'm using the full width of this blade. You can also just go like that. Is like it people out in face? Uh, my live feed, don't worry about it. I'm getting some really good close-up shots here with this camera, so I'll upload that later tonight. Same thing here. Now, it's half and half. Oops. Let's try to do it on this side. I have half of this blade. <laughs> I have half of this blade on the neck long side and half of this on the nine side half and half. So I'm going straight down half and half. Then I'll go over and blend a little bit more. And again, see all this yuckies? I'm going to come around. Follow the way the hair is growing. See the way the hair is growing this direction. Not like this. Always, always, always with any of your grooming. Scissors, thinning shears, clippers, Look at the grain of the coat and have the blade of your thinning shear or the blade of your clipper perfectly matching the direction the hair is growing. Could be a little bit different on each dog. It's going to be similar, but it could be a little bit different. Okay, then here was this that we pulled up to do the occiput. So now I'm going to take my seven blade and well, she was groomed, so not like two weeks ago, which is normal. So here is where I could definitely use. Okay, just no more. Well, here I would just do one strike at a time the whole way across. The blade of my scissor is matching the direction. The hair starts to grow this way, here. See what I'm doing? I'm following the grain of the hair. Natural, 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 natural. Yes, we have to clipper this breed. Yes, we have to groom this breed. But every square inch of this dog when she's done should look like the hair grew that way. That I didn't even touch it to groom it. That she just came out of her mother's womb and she grew up to be 12 years old and this is how her hair it has been for her whole life. I shouldn't see man-made marks on this dog. Shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't. So there it is, the English Springer Spaniel head. I've gone over it a couple times. I'll go over the lines again. Corner of the ear to the corner of the eye. Corner of the ear straight down. The eye to the corner of the lip. So there there and there. That's it. That's the only things, three things you have to remember. How easy is that? There, there, okay, and there. And three or four fingers sitting on top of that breastbone. Now Kira, I only need three because Kira's got a substantial front. Her, her, her whole front assembly comes way out in front but I am telling you because I own that dog his whole lifetime and Tintinabulation and a whole lot of the others um, even Sherman right this breastbone here met this lip when I had them stacking so 
That's how bad our front ends are. If you are going over a dog or seeing them in a show ring, this, now of course, everybody grows all this hair out. Hello? So with all this bushy hair out, your eye makes it look like their front end is here, but you go put your, watch the judges when they have these dogs on the table, when they go into the front. If you see a judge go like this, where's the breastbone? <laughs> yeah, we can trim in that breastbone to be correct, and that's exactly what they are doing with this big loopy circle that we leave. Why do we leave it? Well, because our dogs have to be groomed to match the breed standard of our breed, right? So, from the corner of this lip, straight down, is where this breastbone should be. And if it's not, then we have to make an optical illusion that that's where it is. So, don't breed standard poodles. Don't breed out the body parts that make this a flushing spaniel hunting dog. Poodles originated as a flushing retriever, believe it or not. And look what mankind has done to them. It's horrid. We, uh, we, I, w I was part of the process of bringing poodles into the AKC Spaniel Hunt Testing Program, and everybody's like, a poodle! Well, hello? Now, the history of that breed. How about, how, people ask, why do they have those funny balls at their feet and their rear end? Well, in, in the day, when they were a water retrieving dog, Okay, they deliberately left. Okay, balls here. Troy, stand up. Let's pretend you're a poodle. Okay, okay. They left balls of hair here. You've seen it at the show ring, right here. Well, what is there? The hip joint. Okay, what is here? Okay, the bend of pastern on the front leg. So what they were doing is they were leaving the hair to protect the joints so the joints would stay warmer when the dogs were doing their water retrieve work. So hair here, hair around the hock joint, hair around this pastern joint, and then they would leave hair in the front part again to give the dog protection from water and to allow the dog to stay warmer when it was doing water work. Then everything else was trimmed away because their hair got gnarly and kind of like a corded pulley would be in its natural state. So there you are, a little bit of history about poodles because they really were, they really were hunting dogs to begin with. So we let them into our AKC hunt test program. I am very, very happy to say that I, have, I as a judge, have given junior and senior legs to poodles and their owners. And those dogs found, flushed, retrieved, and did water work as good as any Springer could. They hunt like a poodle, not like a Columber Spaniel. That's a whole different video. Okay, stay. The minute I let go of her, we're like over here. Her, her love affair with this camera will be over. So, there is Troy. There is a beautiful head. Nice lips. Great pigment, beautiful. If you looked over top of this dog, and I don't know if the camera can show you that, this is a square. Don't for forget this, it's a flat, square top skull. Nice eyebrows, good high arch, and that's bone. Yes, we leave the hair there, but she really does have a really high bone there. Moderate stop, big, nice flues. Yeah, for an American bred bitch, decent, very decent planing on this bitch. Yeah, right. Uh, and when I say that is that go on Facebook to all your European friends' pages and look at their springers. <laughs> and this flat plane here matches their nose being flat in a profile. Jesse James also had that. Uh, on my new page, my new Facebook page, which matches the YouTube page, Dog Tricks of the Trade. Up in the left-hand corner is a profile picture of Jesse James. And of course I did that deliberately because that is the perfect English Springer Spaniel in profile. That dog had an exquisite headpiece. Wasn't one thing about it that I could fault. Exquisite, perfect.
So that's why I have it up there. Show everybody what they should look like. Okay, well, that's, I think that's going to turn out way better than grooming a black dog. And we have to thank Troy, one of my big hotshot hunters with 16 performance titles. She got her final one as a therapy dog. So she's a real sweetheart too. So we're going to say goodbye on this segment. And yeah, I think it's late enough. I'm going to go get myself a glass of wine. Got some in the refrigerator here and it's hot because the coffee has definitely worn off and the wine hasn't kicked in yet. So now that I'm done with her, we're going to say goodbye and I'll see you the next segment.